All right, so I'm gonna go through a couple of pictures with you guys. Um, we've got a whole lot more pictures to go through now and a whole lot more info and just kind of break this down in comparison to um, a Defender or a Ranger and my thoughts as we go. Uh, first off, I think for the price that they're gonna bring this in at, um, all the prices we've seen so far are Australian and converted over. They're gonna start about $20,000 for this really high-end model uh, in a single cab. And I'm gonna guess after you accessorize it out, it's probably gonna be somewhere around, I don't know, 23 to 24. Um, but if it's 20,000, 21,000, uh, 22,000, you know, that is a whole lot less than what you can get a Defender nor or a Polaris North Star for. So just looking at this, they did a excellent job just jumping into the market. I mean, this looks, if you think about when Polaris or you think about when Can-Am jumped into the market, I mean, they come out swinging. This is an absolutely beautiful machine. And the black on it, I really like. It reminds me a lot of a Defender, but the thing about it is, is you're getting full LED running lights like we talked on the other one. I'm sure this big HD bumper is a accessory, but they did a really good job with the wheel set, how the door lines are. Just an absolute beautiful thing. Um, we're gonna go through some more pictures here. This one looks to be accessory, you know, equipped with the bumper, mirrors. I, I, I don't know, maybe the mirrors come standard. But that's a full cab heat and air model right there. Um, I really like the black. They've got a red, they've got a green, a um, few other colors that I've seen. Here's the red color. I like it. Um, one of the things that I did, you know, I was talking about in the last video. If you look here, I can't understand why they've decided to do this. So, and under all the seats, the floorboard is, is straight across. And your seats do not have storage under them like you do in the Ranger or the Defender. I really don't like that. And I cannot see any benefit to doing it the way that they've done it. Um, maybe it would be a little bit quieter cab, but I'm gonna guess in that it's just airspace because that's how it is in the Ranger and the Defender besides under the back seat of the Ranger and that's access to your motor bay and stuff, which does help to change the oil and everything. Hopefully this is easy to maintenance like the Ranger is because the Defender is a pain in the tail. And for anybody that don't know, that's never watched the channel, to change the oil in a Defender Limited, you have to either one, remove the seats, um, or flip the seats up and remove one of them on the right side, the battery cover, and then a couple of covers in the back panel on the back seat. And I can show you that to get down in the motor, or you have to really maneuver your arm and do some engineering, uh, get very witty with some uh, wrenches and some other stuff to get to change the oil. It's just really, really a pain in the tail. Hopefully these are easy to maintenance, but um, I don't know, I haven't seen that. They come with 29 inch tires, so that's gonna be the same as the Polaris Ranger. The um, Defenders now come with 30s across the board once you get in the limited models, which I wish the Ranger had 30s and I wish this had 30s on it. That's something you're gonna have to upgrade. Um, you can see some more here. There's the interior on that. I really like the interior. Um, these are not gonna have arched A-arms, but they are gonna have a nice powered flip-up windshield and they are gonna have that uh, rear trucker glass that opens right here that we was talking about. And you can see they've got toolbox accessories, cooler accessories, things that snap in just like the Defender and the Ranger. I really like this tail light, how it looks. Like I said, they have come out swinging and they have really uh, finessed this machine and made a beautiful machine out of it. And I think that there's gonna be a lot of people that if you can get these things for $5,000 below a Polaris or a Ranger, 
they're going to have a really hard time justifying buying the Ranger or the Defender over this because you're getting a lot for your money. Now, there is things that I do like better on the Defender and the Ranger, but we'll get into that later. Uh, as far as the doors, the seats, um, they, they've got excellent looking seats. And I did see in one of the um, actual clips that this seat goes up and this seat goes down. I could not see if it had cup holders and whatever in the back, but you could see a little tab sticking up on this part here. So that was just my assumption. Now I haven't seen it function. So I guess we'll have to wait and see till they come out. But you can see how this is all enclosed through here. I don't, I can't understand why they would do that and not give you the storage. It does have really nice automotive electric windows in the front and the rear. You can see how elegant and how nice they've made that. It looks just like an automotive window. It's not, you know, dorky switches like in some of the Defenders and Rangers. It's an actual automotive inlaid push button. Really nice setup. Um, you can see the backs the same way. See this big paneling that goes all the way under and then you can remove the seat, but then there's no way you can have storage under there. They've got the cup holders here uh, and the bar. I like how they've done that. So it's kind of up out of the way. Um, the Defenders is kind of a little bit more out in your face area, but they've got a nice header panel in here, the speaker set up, the back headrest. Those are kind of like the Defender and the Ranger. There's not much difference in those. Um, there's another shot of the seats. I really like the seats in it. Like I said, they, they did a good job as far as making it look more automotive. There's the push button style shifter. Like I said, some of you guys are gonna like that. Some of you are not. Now, my thoughts are, just like I said in the last video, if you're trying to hit this while you're in the woods and you get in a hairy situation, because people don't just buy this just to farm. A lot of these people are buying these for multiple purposes. And the one thought I have, and this is one of the things I don't like in comparison to, if you're just farming with it, I doubt you're ever gonna have anything against this. But if you're not farming with it, then if you're in the woods and you're climbing a hill and you get out of whack and you go to hit you know, reverse, and you hit neutral and then that thing starts to roll back with you. Like I said, there's so many scenarios I can think of that I would absolutely hate this. Um, that's gonna be something you're gonna have to judge. Now it does have this NFC uh, style key, which is like what comes in an automotive deal. So you've got the push button start here and down here, you've got an NFC card slot to let you uh, just put the card in and out, just like a push button truck or anything. You've got a key fob. I, I really like that. That is, that's super sweet. I would hope they all go to that. Um, and you can see it right here. That's a little NFC chip for your um, uh, starting and everything. Hopefully they'll have a phone deal. You can see the big display that they've got. I think this is eight inches and they've got some pictures on here, or I've got some pictures on here of the Apple CarPlay working on it. It looks just like automotive. I mean, it is so sweet. This is gonna be where your HVAC will be in the, the HVAC models. Um, but you can see turf and lock and all your different modes, downhill descent control, you can turn it on, which is like something you get in a Polaris Trail Boss. Um, I really like the push button trail control deal on there. And like I said, they have, they have went, they've come out swinging with this model. Um, there you can see another door panel inlay on there. And then you've got more seating pictures, really nice paint job. They've got like an inlaid fender straight from the factory that sticks out a little bit. I like that. Um, all the paint on these looks almost like candy paint. It's just real pearly flake looking. And I, I really like all the paint colors actually. Um, and their accessory package is really, really sweet looking. But you can see the window there, how it's hydraulic struts that go in and out. Um, and it comes with a big bumper from the factory. These are some of the photos we looked at last time you can see more of what it shows on there um 
Let's get over here. Now, like I said in the last video, come to find out there isn't an instrument cluster here. I'm absolutely blown away why they did not put an instrument cluster here. And if you look at the new Z10 and the instrument cluster that's in that, I'll show you one here in a second. But the instrument cluster that's in that new Z10 is so beautiful. Probably one of the most uh, elegant, you know, it's just a sweet panel display. I, do, I wish they would have had it in this. Um, but I, I don't know. I can't figure out why they would do that and just have it to where it's right here on these high-end models. This is obviously the HVAC model with all the air conditioning and everything because you can see it here and then here. So there's no room. So they should have did it just like the Defender where this panel flush was back behind it and that's another thing that, you know, I just, I cannot understand for the life of me why they did not put an instrument cluster in here and it's just got this panel here. Absolutely blown away by that. And I wish they would have, you know, put an instrument cluster in it. Everybody's gonna hate that. There's you another picture of the HVAC model. They did an excellent job with this dash besides instrument cluster, but the seating, the dash, the panels, it looks like you're gonna have great visibility just like you would in the Defender um, or the Ranger. The cup holders look nice how they are. Hopefully these have rubber garments in them, otherwise your drink's just gonna slosh out that and fall over. Um, but we'll see. You can see it says CF Moto on the steering wheel and the pedals look like automotive pedals. They've got like a double vinyl leather split right there. I like that with the grab handle over the right. And you can see the handle on here looks super sturdy and how it is. Okay, so electronic tilt up glass windshield with wiper washer, color match doors with gloss power windows, full enclosed cabin. You can see all the stats right here of what they're saying these are gonna have. So it's gonna be a really nice machine. And as far as the front end, when they put the bumper on there, I absolutely love all the running lights. I love how they did the headlights. I think it's gonna look really sweet at night. Um, another thing, they're giving you an antenna from the factory. Uh, the Defenders do not do that. So when you put a radio in, uh, you've got to put an external antenna in there, which isn't a hard thing to do, but it's just the fact that it would be a simple fix these lower A-arms look like they are arched slightly. So you can see how it bows down here and then comes across. So I guess they are arched A-arms, or at least they look like they are. You can see the little indent right here. And I think on the actual, um, where it compares them, it shows that. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand when you're looking at these stats here, this is the U10 Pro. This price is um, for the U10 Pro, and then they've got the Polaris Ranger. But the one thing I want you to know is they've got this Polaris Ranger, and they've got it as the lower-end model, the premium, not the high-end model with the 29-inch tires. So you've got to understand that the, I don't know why they've done that, I guess so it makes it look better, but, um, you know, they're showing that they give a two-year warranty, which would be way better than Polaris or k &M. Now, in Polaris, if you get a Polaris and you're a veteran, I think there's four or five th things that they'll give you. And on the warranty, they'll give you two years uh, if you're a veteran or a couple other things. Maybe farm, if you do it with the farm, they give you two years. Uh, but other than that, it's just one year. So... Uh, and on this, they're showing 27 inch tires on the Defender. So I'm guessing they're showing that the U10 Pro, even the normal models have 29 inch tires. And they're saying that the Ranger, the XP1000 HD EPS ADC has 27 inch tires and the Defender HD10 DPS has 27 inch tires. I was thinking that all the HD10s had 30 inch tires now, 
but uh, maybe it has 27 inch tires. I'd have to look and see. But it, at least, you know, when I'm looking at these, I'm thinking about the limited models, all the cab models, because that's, that's my realm of things and where I really buy at. But one of the other things on the winch, the U10 Pro does have synthetic rope, just like a, a Ranger does. I really like that. Now, the thing to me that really doesn't make a lot of sense is they put this three-cylinder in it, and it only has eight more horse. So I wonder if that three-cylinder will be able to, being naturally aspirated, be able to move the pistons, because you got another piston, you've got to work and consume fuel, will be better on fuel, and actually, I know this is 90 horse, but I'm wondering if that 90 horse will be peppier than the V-Twins will with 82 horse. Um, I kind of doubt it will be, uh, but I guess we'll see once you, we get them out and hopefully we can find somebody or we may even buy one of these. I don't know. It just depends on how nice they are. But um, they're comparing these four inch screens and this is an eight inch. Now in the Ranger, you can get the um, Ride Command, which is a seven inch screen, but then it also has an instrument cluster that's really nice where this one does not have an instrument cluster. So absolutely stupid to me. I have no clue why they would do that. Um, but anyway, I do like the push button start. Let's go on over here. They're all CVT, um, but the Ranger is, and the Defender are twin cylinder where this is a three cylinder. So that's very interesting. I think this three cylinder, they're using it in a ton of their new side-by-sides. So I think it's a multi-use platform motor. And I even think it's the same motor that's probably turbocharged and got upgrades that they put in the Z10 and the other ones. Now, here's another comparison to the North Star models. These are Australian AUD. So if you convert $29,990 to American, you're looking at about 20, a little over $20,000. So this is saying the U10 Pro Highland, which is supposed to be the really nice HVAC system. So this is supposed to be apples to apples comparison. Now, the one thing that they're doing with the North Star, and I don't know why, but they're putting 27 inch tires on it. So I'm guessing they're using the premium edition to pit it against the HD10 Pro, which doesn't make sense because, you know, they've got to use the Defender. They're using their highest end model and pitting it against the Ranger's lowest end model. So I want you to understand that because the the North Star comes with 29 inch tires on it if you get the higher end model on there. But price for price, if this works out and this thing's $21,000 and the Ranger's 30,000 um, American and the Defender is about, they're, they're both around, they're a little over 30,000, you know, 29 to $31,000 and this is 20,000, 21,000, we'll say, if that's how it works out and it comes to America that way, that's going to be absolutely insane. Now, another thing, if you look here, this has a um, 90 horse power compared to 82. So like I said, you've got eight more horsepower. Auto trans, so your push button, you know, all of it's push button on the dash, where these have the little manual shifter, um, I prefer the manual shifter. You know, I, I think Polaris and Can-Am did a, a smart thing in leaving that, but uh, we'll see what they choose to do later on. Um, now, the other thing, I have always said this on the Defenders. I absolutely love that the Defenders have a brake holding mechanism. And what that is, up and under your um, steering wheel, you have a pull-out lever that locks all of your brakes. So when you're on a hillside and you stop and you're in, let's say high, because you don't want to shift to drive and make it make that loud clunk, 
like if you put it in park on a hill and you're in a ranger and then you have to get back in it and take off, you have to jam it down to high or low and you can just hear the transmission absolutely beating itself internally. Same way with my Expedition or matter of fact, any Polaris that's ever been made. Dumbest thing ever to not have a parking brake on it. This has an electric parking brake. So that is, that's excellent. That, that lets you go on a hill, leave it in high and never have to shift to park. It's the same way as a Defender. And then you can pull your brake mechanism on, get right back in it, drop the brake mechanism or release your electric parking brake and take off. You're not gonna beat your internal transmission gearing and stuff up when you're switching in there. So that's gonna make it last longer. Um, I'm always, at least one ride, doing that in my Expedition or the Ranger, and I, it just drives me nuts. I, I can't understand why Polaris won't put a either brake mechanism like the Defender has or an automatic parking brake like this has. Um, the Defender's gonna win for ground clearance and tire size um, because it has 29 inch, it has 30 inch tires and they're the nicest tire out of the three. Um, the Ranger in its highest end model is gonna have 29 inch tires just like this one is. And I think these two are 13 inches of ground clearance where the Defender's 14 inches of ground clearance. Obviously that's because the 30 inch tire, but that's one less thing that you have to buy on gnarly trails. You're gonna bottom out a lot quicker with a 29 inch tire and one inch less ground clearance than you are with 14 inches of ground clearance and 30 inch tire. Um, I, I really like the tires, the squared off tires that come on the Defenders now. Radio and speakers come standard in this. Um, they'll come standard in your Ranger if you get the um, upper end model in it too. Like I said, there's the warranty. You've got electric windshield and the trucker sliding rear glass. I really do like that. Uh, it's really nice. We're gonna go on here. Um, they're saying that uh, this CF Moto developed 998 cc three cylinder naturally aspirated uh, for the Highland is 90 horse and 94.5 newton meters of peak torque. The engine is paired with an all new CF Moto developed transmission. And from my understanding, the sheaves in it are steel and stuff. I think they tail that on down here. But what they're saying is from 3000 RPM to 7000 RPM, the U10 Pro engine maintains torque over 90 Newton meters, surpassing the Ranger and the Defender. So you should have much more, you know, power in that power range but without testing these on a trail or you know seeing how they do you know this says a lot on here but i guess we'll see in real life i hope that's you know true because like i said this package is so cheap in comparison to uh anything else you're going to get for that nice of a, a vehicle so here we go low speed smoothness CF Moto CVT system provides an ultra smooth driving experience at low speeds and it has optimized sliders, which are steel, you can see here, instead of nylon sliders. This significantly reduces the impact of temperature variations on performance and longevity. So I'm guessing the nylon compared to steel, the steel doesn't hold the heat or produce the heat when working like the nylon does, uh, prematurely wearing that. Uh, efficient temperature regulations, and so they're saying that they can regulate the temperature inside their CVT box to where it never gets over a temperature that the CVT can actually get hot. So all of them are run by rubber bands, and once the rubber bands get hot, obviously it stretches a lot easier, and then when it cools back down, it tries to contract and it just gets more and more where it's wore out. So hopefully that's true too. Like I said, I've never owned a CF Moto, but they've come out swinging. Uh, this has variable valve timing. Um, that can be good or bad. 
I guess we'll just have to see how it's gonna work on this motor and see if it actually holds up or long-term works out in its favor. Uh, you know, I don't know without testing that. But all this stuff, you know, like I said, you've got so many nice things. This dash, the technology that's in there, um, they're saying the Highland, Highland features include a premium Highland full enclosed cab, as you can see, electro, electric tilt-up glass windshield, wiper washer uh, system, rear glass windshield with trucker sliding window, contour or color match doors with glass power windows, heating, air conditioning, premium headliner and audio system, premium Highland embroidery and badge. 10K plus in total value for an for only an additional six thousand uh, dollars. So whatever the standard price is for the U10 Pro, it's six thousand dollars more. Now that's CF Moto value. So like I said, this is going to be at least four thousand dollars cheaper than a Polaris or a Ranger. There's that NFC chip thing I was talking about um, that's gonna be really nice. You can see all the system protection, maintenance, convenience, all that stuff is right here. Says, basically all the stuff we've already looked at. It says off-road tuned suspension, but it's the same style suspension. It doesn't have any piggybacks on it. It's not a gas shock or nitrogen shock. It doesn't have dual spring rates in it. It's just a, a normal shock. So there's not much tuning you can do with those. And it says it has 12 inches of travel, which is the same as the Defender is. Um, so I guess we'll see on ride quality how it works out for them in the long run. But, you know, I think it's a great value. I, I truly do. And especially for what you're getting on this, um, you can't really go wrong for the price as long as the value is there. You know, when you're looking at these, everybody, you know, when I first bought a North Star and I bought a single cab, I think I gave like $20,500 for it. They went up $10,000 in just five years. So, you know, CF Moto is gonna let a lot more people be able to enjoy these and be, um, in an HVAC cab for a lot less money than what you are going to get in any of the other ones. Now, like I said, as far as, you know, the price and comparing these uh, and features, I, I mean, I think it's really going to be hard to beat this CF Moto. Um, but until I get my hands on one or can really go through one and check, um, these are just my thoughts. You guys can let me know your full thoughts. Hopefully this helps a lot of you. And if you've seen some of this stuff, let me know how you think it's going to compare, where you think the downfalls are. And when I'm able to get my hands on one and compare one, um, we'll actually check them and, you know, like I said, do some trail testing with them. I'm super curious myself because of how cheap they are. But uh, you guys look at the Z10 uh, I can probably put it in here and show you one real fast. Z10 CF Moto. Let's see what pops up here. See if I can get their dash. So look at this dash. You see the car play, how it works on there? I'll show you. Look how nice this new Z Force is. The interior on this Z10. I mean, it is so slick. But here's the little instrument cluster that I was talking about. It is so vivid. And this video that I'm showing you does it no justice. But the interior on this, this is going to compete with the Rangers and the, um, or I mean, the uh, Mavericks 
and the razors uh this right here i mean they've come out swinging across the board their seats are super nice their interior is super nice the layout is just absolutely balling but um, this little instrument cluster they could have put that on the steering wheel so easy in that new u10 but they didn't do it but anyway you guys let me know your thoughts thanks for watching